The Top 10 Fish You Should Never Eat Hey seafood lovers! Before you grab your fishing rods and head out for a tasty catch, I've got some important news for you. Today we're going to take a closer look at the top 10 fish that you should never, and I mean never, put on your plate. Now you're probably like, why should I even care? Aren't all fish good for us? Well, not exactly. From messing up the environment to posing health risks, these fish have gotten themselves quite a bad reputation. So let's dig into why you should stay away from these watery creatures. Remember, it's always better to be safe than sorry when it comes to what you eat. Number 1. Swordfish Swordfish contain high levels of mercury. You know that shiny silvery stuff that's toxic to humans in large amounts? Unfortunately, swordfish tend to accumulate more mercury in their bodies compared to other fish. This is because they are big predators, and they feast on smaller fish that are also contaminated with mercury. So when you munch on swordfish, you're essentially ingesting all that mercury goodness, and trust me, that's not something you want hanging around in your system. It can mess with your nervous system and lead to all sorts of problems, like impairing brain function, affecting coordination, and causing learning disabilities. The mercury in this fish is so high that Food and Drug Administration FDA, and the Environmental Protection Agency EPA, advise pregnant women, nursing mothers, and young children to avoid it altogether. For men, the recommendation is to limit consumption to just one serving per month. So do yourself a favor and think twice before ordering that swordfish dish. The risks just ain't worth it. Number 2. Orange Ruffy one major concern with orange ruffy is its sustainability. Over the years, there has been extensive overfishing of orange ruffy populations, especially in some regions like New Zealand. These fish are slow growing and can take a long time to reach reproductive maturity, making them particularly vulnerable to overfishing. As a result, their populations have declined significantly, and some organizations have classified orange ruffy as a threatened or endangered species. Apart from sustainability concerns, there's another reason why orange ruffy might not be the best choice for your next meal. It is known to live for a long time, which increases its chances of accumulating mercury. So considering both the sustainability concerns and the high mercury levels, it's generally recommended to avoid or limit the consumption of orange ruffy. Instead, you might want to explore other fish options that are more sustainable and have lower mercury levels. This way, you can still enjoy seafood while being mindful of the environmental impact and your health. Number 3. King Mackerel King mackerel, like swordfish, is a big predator that loves to dine on smaller fish. And as we mentioned earlier, the bigger the fish, the higher the chances of accumulating mercury, polychlorinated biphenyls PCBs, and dioxins in its system. Unfortunately, king mackerel checks all the boxes. PCBs and dioxins are industrial pollutants that were widely used in the past. They're regulated now because they can harm the environment and make people sick. But here's the thing, even though they're not used anymore, they're still around because they're pretty stubborn. While it may seem like king mackerel is off the table due to all these contaminants, here's the good news. The United States Food and Drug Administration FDA, splits them into two groups, king mackerel and Atlantic mackerel and Atlantic mackerel has lower levels of mercury compared to the other kind of king mackerel. So if you're a fan and want to cut down on mercury, you can still go for Atlantic mackerel. But remember, no matter which types you go for, it's important to eat them in moderation to reduce the risk of PCBs and dioxins. Oh, and cooking it right, like grilling or broiling, can also help lessen the amount of those harmful contaminants in the fish. Number 4. Tilefish Tilefish is a type of fish that lives in the ocean and tastes like a yummy combo of lobster and crab. But here's the catch, it's got a lot of mercury in it. Scientists take samples of the fish and test them to see how much mercury is hanging out. And guess what? Tilefish wins the mercury contest with some of the highest levels. It's like a magnet for mercury. If you're wondering how much tilefish is okay for adults, the experts say that having just one serving per month is safe, but that's only if you don't eat any other fish with high mercury levels during that month. It's like a monthly limit to be on the safe side. If you're craving similar flavors, you can try monkfish or snapper. These fish have lower levels of mercury, so you can enjoy them without worrying too much. Number 5. Atlantic Bluefin Tuna Let's talk about bluefin tuna. 
You know, that fancy fish you often find in sushi? Well, there are a couple of reasons why you might want to think twice before chowing down on it. Firstly, bluefin tuna is seriously overfished. People love it so much that its population has taken a massive hit, especially in the Atlantic and Mediterranean regions. Now here's the second thing. Bluefin tuna is known for having high levels of mercury. This stuff is toxic, especially in large amounts, and it can mess with your health. Lastly, the way bluefin tuna is caught can be a real issue. Some fishing methods they use, like longline fishing and purse seining, end up catching a lot of other marine creatures by accident. Dolphins, sea turtles, and sharks can get caught in the process, and that's not cool. So if you're thinking about eating bluefin tuna, go easy on it. If possible, consider alternatives that are more sustainable and don't have as much mercury. Yellowfin tuna and skipjack tuna are good options to satisfy your tuna cravings without harming the environment or your health. We've made it halfway through our list, and we sincerely hope you've enjoyed it so far. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and ring the notification bell if you want to see more content like this. Let's move forward with the video. Number 6. Tilapia Tilapia is a type of fish that you can find in many parts of the world, and it is quite popular. But when it comes to the good stuff it offers, it's not exactly a superstar. Compared to fish like salmon or trout, tilapia falls a bit short in terms of nutritional value. The omega-3 fatty acid levels are kinda on the low side. These are the good fats that are awesome for our health. Omega-3s are like superheroes for our hearts and help reduce inflammation in our bodies. So if you're looking for a fish packed with these fantastic fats, tilapia might not be your best choice. Another thing to consider is how tilapia is farmed. Most of the tilapia you find in stores is farmed instead of being caught in the wild. There have been some reports and studies suggesting that farming practices for tilapia, especially in some countries, involve using antibiotics or other chemicals, and that's where the worry starts. We're concerned about the potential impact these practices have on our health. Number 7. Grouper These guys can live for a long time, and you know what? The longer they live, the more toxins they can gather in their bodies. Some grouper species, like the goliath grouper, can live up to 50 years. Can you imagine how many toxins they can accumulate in all that time? Not something you want in your belly. But that's not the only issue. Groupers are in high demand because people love their taste. That means they're caught in large numbers, and that's called overfishing. When you catch too much grouper, it messes up the delicate balance of our oceans. Oh, and there's one more thing you should know about grouper. It's a common target for seafood fraud. Back in 2015, an investigation revealed that more than a third of the 19 restaurants in Atlanta were sneaking pangasius, or Vietnamese catfish, onto plates and passing it off as grouper. That's some serious deception going on. But it doesn't stop there. They also discovered that the so-called grouper for sale is often just king mackerel or whitefin weak fish, which are cheaper substitutes. So you might think you're enjoying a delicious grouper dish, but in reality, you're getting something else entirely. Number 8. Farmed Salmon Picture this. Lots of fish crammed into pens, swimming around in their waste. Ew. These crowded environments can lead to diseases and parasites spreading like wildfire. To combat this, farmers often use antibiotics and pesticides, which can end up in the fish and potentially in our bellies when we eat them. Speaking of what they eat, farmed salmon's diet is another thing to consider. Wild salmon get to feast on a natural diet of smaller fish and marine goodies, which gives them a healthy dose of omega-3 fatty acids. But farmed salmon, well, their diet of formulated pellets may not offer the same nutritional goodness. As a result, the omega-3 content in farmed salmon can be lower than their wild cousins. So if you get to choose, going for wild-caught salmon that's caught sustainably could be a better option. It might be a bit pricier and not as readily available, but it is better for your health and the planet. Number 9. Shark One of the main reasons to avoid eating sharks is the issue of sustainability. Sharks reproduce slowly and have long lifespans, which means they can't replenish their populations as quickly as they are being harvested. Some species of shark are even considered endangered or critically endangered. So when we consume shark meat, we contribute to the decline of their already vulnerable populations. 
Another thing to consider is the potential health risks associated with eating sharks. Sharks are at the top of the marine food chain, and as a result, they accumulate high levels of mercury and other toxins in their bodies. Oh, and we can't ignore the whole cruelty thing, right? Sharks are often caught through practices like finning, where their fins are sliced off while they are still alive, and then they are thrown back into the water to die. This practice is incredibly inhumane and wasteful, as it only utilizes a small part of the shark's body. So by making this small choice, you are making a big difference in protecting sharks and keeping the ocean ecosystem balanced. Number 10. Eel Overfishing and habitat destruction have messed up eel populations in many parts of the world. These slimy creatures don't reproduce quickly, and their life cycle is pretty complicated, which makes it hard for their numbers to bounce back. But that's not all. Eels have this special ability to soak up harmful chemicals and contaminants from their surroundings. Things like polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBs, and flame retardants can end up in their bodies. These chemicals are not good for us to consume. To give you an example, in places like New Jersey, the river eels are so contaminated that they recommend even grown-ups limit their eel consumption to just one per year. That's how serious it can be. These contaminants can cause all sorts of health problems if we eat eels regularly. So the next time you find yourself perusing the seafood section or scanning the menu at your favorite restaurant, take a moment to consider the impact of your choices. Now that you know which fish to avoid, you can navigate the seafood world with confidence. Opt for fish lower in mercury, responsibly sourced, and support sustainable fishing practices. Remember, the choices we make today shape the world we pass on to tomorrow. Let's ensure a future where seafood can be enjoyed without compromising our health or the well-being of our beloved marine ecosystems. Happy eating, and may your seafood adventures be filled with flavor and peace of mind. Do you find this video informative or helpful? Let us know in the comments section below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future videos. Don't forget to like and share. Stay healthy!